There are more than half a dozen lawsuits right now against the Montgomery County Jail alleging civil rights violations. Tonight, we go behind the scenes on a tour of the jail with the chief deputy. Two News reporter Maytal Levy takes us there and is asking about the allegations. The stuff that's been portrayed that, that this jail is, is out of control and there's constant issues in here is not the case. Before Chief Deputy Rob Streck and I walked through parts of the jail, he puts away his firearm. Guns, knives, anything like that. Even you? Mm-hmm. Everybody. Yeah, there's no... The, the only thing that's allowed in our jail is pepper spray and tasers. The jail is designed to hold a little over 900 inmates. Men and women are kept separate. Wednesday, 804 were inside. A huge struggle is keeping this place running. Just, just keeping the... The, the jail looking good, making sure everything works, lights work, everything's secure. There are three different types of housing within the jail, and surveillance cameras are everywhere. This is the most restrictive. Streck says it's considered the old style, where inmates are kept behind bars. Which is what people think of when they think of jail. It is inmates inside of housing units that have bars on them. Inmates here have the least freedom because they're considered violent. Inmates that are, that are constantly throwing urine and feces, they're locked down because they cannot be in any type of general population situation. The other style is called the pods, built in the 1990s, where inmates have more freedom. Every cell has the capability to call corrections officers. This open space is where inmates get to roam. And their cells are bigger without bars. If you treat an inmate fairly, they will treat you fairly. That, that's the philosophy of this whole jail. It the last type is the dorm housing built in the early 2000s, where inmates aren't in a cell at all, and a TV with seating is available around the clock. Our, our large open rooms with bunk beds, a TV area, shower, restroom area, things like that. But there are no lockdown cells. Streck says if anyone in any of those cells has an issue, they'll get moved up to the most restrictive floor. How many guards are on a floor at one time? It depends on the time of day and the watch. We can go all the way up to having uh, 48 corrections officers staff. We, we have sergeants on duty, and then we also have deputy sheriffs. Sheriff Phil Plummer tells me he's looking forward to working with commissioners on a committee and hopefully getting more resources to the jail. And the population has changed drastically in the past 10 years. You know, with the mental health issues we have, the substance abuse issues we have, we have an outdated facility. Those inmates are kept on this floor in open cells for a 24-hour watch. Streck says it's the busiest. We're not equipped to deal with the increasing amount of services that need to be handled within our jail. Uh, we're, we're doing everything we can. As for that restraint chair, where Amber Swink was pepper sprayed last year, Streck says it's used on inmates that are a danger to the public and themselves. The restraint chair looks bad, but it is a nationally recognized device that allows people to be restrained without injuring them. The sheriff's office did not talk about specific cases because they're still pending in court. If you want to read about those eight pending lawsuits against the jail, we've covered that for you since the beginning. You can read all of that coverage online at WDTN.com. Maytal Levy, 5 on 2.